credited accounts payable. So we expensed something that we didn't pay for in, in that sense. And therefore, we're recording an expense that needs to be backed out. So we have an expense that brought down Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. This number, and we need to take it back out of that number. And that's why basically if uh, accounts payable goes up, then we're actually going to increase the net income. On the other hand, if, if accounts payable goes down, what happened then, we paid more cash, meaning we uh, credited cash and we debited accounts payable. So we paid the cash out at a later date. And if we paid the cash out, then we need to recognize the expense when we paid the cash. And therefore, uh, if accounts payable goes down, <laughs> we are going to decrease the net income. So again, you, you wanna mull that over in your head, but and, and the same is going to be true with all other liabilities, basically. So the same is true for all assets will be doing this. All liabilities will be doing that. It's good to think through the AR and the AP just for practice and then apply that same rule to the rest of the accounts. So we're just going to say negative of the 84,250 and enter. And there we can see that it's bringing down the balance here. And that's because it went from the 102 down to 17. So it went so it went down, meaning it's going to decrease the uh, flows or the net income. So now we have the net cash flows from operating is this number here. And I'm going to highlight this and say we found a home for it. All right, now we have this short term notes payable, short term notes payable. Where is it going to go? Is it going to go from flows from operations, flows from investing, flows from financing? And note that if we if we think about, you know, what happens or what type of things affect the short term note payable, uh, a note payable, if we got a note payable, we debited cash and we credited note payable, no income statement accounts, therefore not going to be on the statement of uh, operations. It, it's not going to be on the cash flow from operations. So is it going to be investing or is it going to be financing? And in this case, if, if we're taking about, if we're talking about loans, we're talking about ways to finance the business. That's going to be a financing activity. So we're going to put it down here in uh, the financing activities. Now in the description, I'm gonna put cash borrowed from short-term note, why? Because the note went up and I would assume that that's because uh, we borrowed more money. <laughs> so we're gonna say that the more money was borrowed in that case. Again, that, there's not gonna be a lot of transactions in a note, therefore we can go back and kind of check that and see if that's the case by just looking at the, at the general ledger, looking at the activity, looking at the agreement that uh, came up with those numbers. So I'm gonna put a negative of that 5,000 and enter and that, of course, is going to increase the cash flow statement because uh, we received cash in that case. All right, next one, we got the long term note. Once again, it went from here up to there and it's a note that and the note is not going to be on the cash flow from operations. It's also going to be, of course, the financing activity down here. Now, I'm also going to put cash borrowed here and I'm going to put a negative of this number. We're assuming that it went up again, that we borrowed that. Once again, I'm going to go back to the terms of this note. I'm going to highlight these, both of these and say, look at that, the terms of that note and see if that is what actually happened. But for now, I'm going to say that we found a home for this number. We're going to go back and look at it at a later time. Okay. So then we have the common stock. So common stock is going to be the, the stocks that were basically issued for the most part. And a lot of times they're, they're not going to change from period to period because the common stocks won't be issued. Stock will be traded often traded oftentimes if it's a publicly traded company, but the stock issuances do not happen all the time. In this case, we went from 200 to uh, 215. Therefore, it looks like we issued more common stocks. So question being, is it going to be in the cash flow from operating, cash flow from investing or finance? And if you think about the common stocks, what's going to happen? We're going to debit cash. We're going to get cash from investors, stockholders, and we're going to credit the common stock. 
nothing on the income statement in that case. Therefore, it's going to be financing or investing, and it's going to be part of financing. If we, if we uh, issue more common stock, we're generally trying to generate money financing for the company. So we are going to assume we've received cash because, of, of course, the common stock went up. Why did it go up? Because we got cash for it. We're going to put a negative of the 15. That'll flip the sign and that'll increase the cash flow, which makes sense because the cash flow would be going up from the financing that we received. Then we're going to have the paid in capital. Now, the paid in capital is a little bit tricky because you might be thinking, well, where, where does the paid in capital come from? Now, remember when we issue common stock, if the stock is issued at par meaning we have this set par rate out there then uh we're not going to actually sell it for the par value we're going to sell it for whatever we can get you know so anything that we get over the par value is going to be have to put into this this uh, additional paid in capital so note that the additional paid in capital is basically part of the common stock meaning uh we have this many outstanding at par but we really sold it for this plus this or the 245. Uh, so that's part of the issuance here. So I'm going to include that in this number. So I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to go to the end of it and I'm going to put a negative of this number. And the formulas might get a little confusing for you there. I mean, uh, if, if you think about it, obviously, if we highlight those two, it's a 45,000. We want to make it a positive number. We said a negative plus a negative and that will give us uh, flip the sign of both of them. You can also do it this way, negative SUM of this plus this. So I wanna take that 45 and flip the sign, make it a positive number because the cash flow should be increasing. All right, so we're gonna add these up now. So the cash flows from, from operating, notice we found a home for all these, so this is good. We're gonna add them up and we're gonna see if the change then now adds up to the 61.9, which it should if we found a home for everything and we got everything going kind of the right way here. So we already added up the cash flow from operating. That's all of this. Then we've got the cash flow from investing. So I'm gonna highlight this and sum these up. And of course we, we pull this out to the side generally. That's how we often uh, format our worksheets. I'm gonna highlight these two. I know nothing is here yet. Probably something's gonna go there when we start breaking things out. And so there we have that. And then we got cash flows from financing activity. I'm gonna go down to the bottom here, I'm gonna equal the sum of these, highlight these. And once again, I know I have a blank cell down here because probably there's something else that we're gonna to have to break out down there. And I'm gonna put enter. And so now we have, these are our, our subtotals operating, uh, investing, financing. Then we're gonna sum up those three numbers. And that should give us the uh, net change, in this case, an increase in cash. So we're going to say this is the sum of the operating plus the uh, investing and the financing given us the 61.9. That should match 61.9 up here. Note that it has that has to work. So if we found a home for all of these, we have it going the correct way in terms of a plus and minus format, then the difference has to be that. It has to be, it has to work out. So if it, if it doesn't, then just, just, you know, go through here and check each one of these items until you find which one is not going the right way and it and it will uh figure out if done properly but it has to work okay so then what we're going to do is we want to end off with the cash flow at the end of the year because we want to be able to tie out the financial statements and tie it out to the cash flow meaning we want it the end number to be this number so what we're going to do is we're going to take the change and then we're going to we're going to add to it what the cash was equals the cash at the beginning enter and that means that if equals this is the change 61.9 plus the cash that we started with 61,550 then the ending cash would be the 123.450 which should tie out to the uh, cash here so that's what's gonna the cash flow ending balance will always tie out to the balance sheet cash amount all right so now we have this entire thing but and it works it all ties out everything we're you know everything is the way it should be however we have these accounts here that uh, remember we're saying those could have some issues and we want to go into each one of those individual and say okay is that number right is it do we have to adjust that number and then we'll adjust them systematically so that um uh, we can know if we're out of balance where we're out of balance when we got out of balance 
So most problems will actually give us some more information if it's a book problem. They, they often give a, a detailed information or more information like, like this, laid out like this. In real life, obviously, we would go back and look at the actual transactions in the general ledger. So, uh, so I give us some more information here. So let's take a look at the net income. So we, we found that if we, obviously we're gonna check net income to the income statement and see if it ties out. We did that before. We said that 1045 does not tie out to the net income on the income statement, which is 158.1. So we know something's wrong there. Something's going to have to change. We're going to have to adjust this number uh, somehow. Now, why would that happen? Why would the change in the retained earnings not just be net income? And again, if we went to the GL to the uh, retained earnings general ledger account, we would see exactly what happened. Well, we'd say, oh, we closed out the 104.5, but uh, we also had probably something else called uh, dividends in this case. So dividends is probably the other thing that could happen. We wouldn't have to guess that in real life. We wouldn't be looking at, you know, just a random set of numbers. We'd go look at the T account or the general ledger and we would see, okay, there's something else in there. That's something being dividends. If we think about the, I'm going to think about the journal entry now and then think about where we could adjust. I'm going to adjust this number to agree with net income in such a way that it will be in balance. So you can see I have a similar kind of setup here. We've got the number here. We're going to put a, a change here. We're going to end with the balance here being that plus that. And therefore, if we have one change going one way and the other change going the other way, <laughs> we will remain in balance. So let's see. First, let's analyze what a depreciation entry would look like. Uh, if we if we paid out dividends, then what would happen is cash would be paid out. Cash would go down. And if we look at the GL account, I'm going to scroll over here and pick this information up. It's going to be in our added information. We would see the dividends in this case, dividends declared and paid 53,600. That means that uh, cash went down. I'm going to scroll over to our worksheet. If we were going to do the journal entry related to that, I'm going to put a credit of 53,600. Cash went down. We're going to debit something for 53,600. And that debit is going to go to retained earnings. So that's obviously that retained earnings is what is throwing us off there. That's what's making the net income not work. So now let's think of that. Well, if that's the case, then what should we increase or decrease on our cash flow statement? And of course, we know that net income needs to increase. Notice I'm not talking about debits and credits here, but same kind of idea. We're going to say that, well, net income is going to go up by that 53,600. And something else is going to have to happen. I know that this needs to go up by 53. 600 because that makes my net income be what we want so if i look at that now this ties out if i go over here and say okay that's the 1581 that's what had to happen but uh what's the other side going to go to uh, what's the you know we, we we are now out of balance if we scroll down here we know that this number needs to be the 123 450 it is not now <laughs> so we're going to have a decrease somewhere in relation to that and that decrease is going to be called cash paid for dividends and where is that decrease going to go well it's going to be a it's going to be a financing activity in this case so that's going to be in this blank spot that we left down here conveniently for this number so i'm going to put the cash paid for dividends and i'm going to put it over here into the into the change column so it's over in the change column so it doesn't throw off this number down here so we're going to say the cash paid for dividends negative 53600 and there now we're back in balance so that's the idea we're gonna we broke this number out okay we, now this one is fixed i'm gonna unhighlight that we found a home it's really this number and we fixed it in such a way that we're still in balance and we can move on to the next one and say okay how about this depreciation is it out of whack let's check it on the income statement and let's go through the same process so the way we'll do that is we'll say, okay, depreciation, that's on the income statement. That 15750 should tie out to the income statement. Let's go down to the income statement here and we look at depreciation and ah, it doesn't tie out, right? And then we go, ah, there's something else in there. So obviously in real life, what would we do? We would go to the general ledger account for uh, depreciation and see what else is in there. Something else would be posted to it other than just depreciation expense. Obviously here, we're going to look at the problem and see what else is there. If we take a guess at it, hmm, what else could be affecting depreciation besides the normal journal entry of debiting depreciation, uh, crediting accumulated depreciation. And uh, the, the answer would be that we, we would sell something. What if we sold something or disposed 
of something that could affect accumulated depreciation. And so if we look at our, our information here, we said we sold equipment so that we have equipment sold for 26, uh, 50, uh, 51,000 cost. And it had accumulated depreciation on the books at 22,850. So let's take a look at what that journal entry would look like. Then think about how we can, uh, back those numbers into our cash flow statement. So I'm going to, I'm going to see rebuild this journal entry and then think about how that would affect our cash flow statement. So let's go over here into our journal entry area. And we, if, if we purchased equipment, uh, what, um, if we sold equipment, I should say, we sold it for cash. They said cash would go up by the 2650. This is the journal entry that would happen. And equipment is going to go off the books. Equipment has a debit balance. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it. Equipment is going to be a credit for how much we bought it for, which was 51000 So that's going off the books. We're now selling it. And then we have to get rid of the accumulated depreciation related to the equipment. So remember, the equipment was on there at cost at 51.